All right, so today is Foundation Friday. Happy Foundation Friday, friends. I'm excited, I hope you are. Are we crooked? I can't tell. Every single Friday on my channel, I do a new foundation first impression video. So I'm gonna leave the playlist down below if you've missed any foundation Fridays. So today I'm trying out a foundation that I probably wouldn't have picked up if I didn't do YouTube. A bunch of you guys requested to see this during 15 days of foundation. If you missed that, I'm gonna leave the playlist down below. And I never got around to trying out this foundation during that series, so we're doing it today. This is a freaking high-end pricey foundation, which I try not to judge products based on the price point. I like to just base my opinions on the actual product itself. They're amazing drugstore products, they're amazing high-end products. Obviously, this is not gonna be in everyone's price point, and to be honest, I probably wouldn't pick this up if I wasn't reviewing this for you guys, just because I feel like $67 for a foundation is just hard to justify, personally. I don't even think I said what it is. This is the Giorgio Armani Designer Lift Smoothing Firming Foundation. It has an SPF 20. Pretty sure this is the first Giorgio Armani product I've ever bought in my entire life. You can actually get samples of this if you go to Bloomingdale's or Nordstrom's. Just ask the ladies at the counter or the men for a sample. If you don't want to splurge on it up front and you just want to try it out first, just ask for a sample. As I was doing some research into this foundation, one of the things that was really interesting to me is that it's actually supposed to help heal your skin. I was reading through the reviews on Arshim and a bunch of people said that it actually helped to heal their blemishes and acne and I have cystic acne, I have combination skin and I usually break out a ton on my chin area, hormonal cystic acne. So I kind of think of this as like a two-in-one skincare and foundation or that's how I'm justifying the price point in my head. Restores up to 10 years of luminosity. Do I look 14? Firms lines up to 87% and firm skin by 73%. They have a lot of very interesting wording on here. The Armani Unique Microfill Technology drapes the face with an ultrafine micro lifting matrix. You just freaking lift, that's what you're doing. High concentration of exclusive emollients and velvet filters that immediately lift, soften, and firm for more youthful skin. Corrects color irregularities. This is supposed to be weightless, full coverage. Off the bat, the thing I don't like about this is that there are only eight shades. High-end foundations typically have a wider shade range. Doesn't mean that they go super pale or super dark, but they typically have more than eight shades. Their Luminous Silk Foundation, which I haven't tried, let me know if you guys would want to see that one, but that foundation has way more shades than the Designer Lift Foundation. I'm not sure why that is. You'll see when I apply this how the shade goes on on my skin, but I really had to like blend this down my neck to make this somewhat work. The lightest shade is very dark. If you're pale, this one isn't gonna work unless you mix something in with it. So it really seems like this is kind of catered towards middle skin tones. All right, so swatch time. Just for some comparisons, this is the shade to the lightest shade in the Giorgio Armani Lift Foundation. This is Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless 110. Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick Foundation in 115. Tarte Rainforest of the Sea in the lightest shade. If you guys are excited for this video and you like Foundation Friday, make sure you give this a thumbs up. You can always let me know down below in the comments what foundation you want to see for next week. So if you want to see my thoughts on the Giorgio Armani Designer Lift Foundation, you're in the right place. Just keep watching. All right, we are here. What time is it? Where's my phone? It's 10.28 in the morning. Why does everything look blue? I think I'm gonna get some new lighting. I just have nowhere to put it in my room. I feel like the background needs to be like brighter or something. Even though you guys have already seen the swatches, I haven't swatched this yet, so I'm not sure how dark or light this is gonna be. This packaging though is glorious. This is a glass bottle, pretty heavy. Like I don't know if you wanna be traveling with this thing. So I'm gonna shake this a little bit and then pump this out. And I did already prime my face. Today I used the Jouer Anti-Blemish matte primer. I've been kind of feeling this. I've been reaching for this a lot. And by the way, if you didn't see last week's Foundation Friday, you should go watch that because I've been reaching for the CoverGirl BB Cream a shit ton lately. Really like it. Whoa, it's pretty liquidy. Yeah, super liquidy. It says it's full coverage, so I'm going to start with that amount, about a quarter sized amount. And I do have a brush here and a sponge. I'm going to use my Sigma F80 on one side of my face and then the Real Technique sponge on the other. There's fuzz. So I'm gonna start with the brush on this side of my face. Whoa, shade looks quite yellow and dark. But it's covering really well. And it's going pretty far. Like I'm spreading this to the other side of my face now because I have a ton of product. It smells kind of like baby wipes slash like grandma perfume. This is like bringing back childhood memories of sitting in my mom's bathroom and smelling all of her makeup. Did anyone else do that? I think I smelled it more than I actually 
put it on my face. Shade wise, no. If you're a pale princess, this one is a definite no. It's gonna be way too dark. I'm just gonna majorly blend this down my neck and hope that I can make it not look orange. I have to like leave the house today, so I'm gonna attempt to make this doable without a foundation mixer just because I don't want it to alter the formula or anything. But as far as the foundation, I really like how it went on and how it's sitting on my face. So I'm just gonna use a tiny bit since that went pretty far for my forehead. Yeah, a little definitely goes a long way. Thank God, because it's freaking pricey. This is looking really nice. It's pretty dewy, I would say, but it does feel like it's setting on my face, which I like. Feels like I could go without a powder almost. Yep, I think I could. It doesn't feel like the Josie Marin Argan Oil Foundation, which I do love, but that one I feel like I definitely have to set. This one, it's dewy, but it is definitely setting on my face. So let's go in for this side, see how much this covers up of this. And this is the Real Technique sponge. I only had a tiny bit of product left. We're still going off the original amount I pumped out. And this is covering really well for the amount of product I just had left over. I'm gonna pump probably half a pump out. This is gonna be the last of my super pre-recorded Foundation Fridays because when you're watching this, I am in Mexico. Probably snapping. I'm probably on Instagram, so you can follow along there if you want to, but so let me know down below which foundation you want to see in next week's Foundation Friday. Oh man, yeah, shade is dark, ladies and gents. As far as coverage, it looks about the same to me. For all of the redness and stuff I had going on right here, it covered pretty well. It doesn't look totally flawless full coverage. I'm gonna go in and just kind of dab on areas where I need a little bit more coverage to see if we can get it totally full coverage. I'm gonna use the brush for that because typically that works better for me. I actually think I'm gonna use a sponge. So I'm doing a super thin second layer. Still isn't totally full coverage, but I kind of like that because it covered everything pretty much that I feel like I need to cover, but you can still see my skin coming through. You can still see freckles, still see some kind of marks on my face that just makes it look still like skin, but it's covering all the things I want covered. It looks like I have a major tan. It's not even showing up on camera how dark it is in person, but it's pretty dark. I'm gonna have to do some major highlighting with concealer. All right, so here's what the foundation's looking like up close. It looks pretty good. Like, it just looks very skin-like to me. Really like the finish of it. It's pretty dewy, so if you don't like dewy, you wouldn't like this, but it's just looking like skin so far. I'm liking it. I might as well try this concealer on camera. This is the Amazing Cosmetics Amazing Concealer. This is in the shade Ivory. I also have the shade Fair, but for some reason, I think this one might be lighter. I don't know, but I'm using the shade Ivory because it's what I have right here. Concealer with these nails is a little interesting. Why am I using my second finger right now? I never use that. I don't know why. This is just one of those products that I've never tried, but that's been out for forever. Because my face is so tan right now, this is looking extra light under there. So I actually leave for my vacation tomorrow in my time. Why did I just put more out? I have a ton on here. But in my time right now when I'm filming this. So tonight I think I'm gonna do a spray tan. I rarely do spray tans, probably like once or twice a year, but I'm going to Mexico and I don't know, I'm just kind of feeling it. Do you? So I don't know how long I'm gonna be able to keep this foundation on because I have to go there before they close tonight but we're gonna do our best. I was planning on waking up super early to film this, but I woke up with a migraine, so that didn't happen. So this is pretty creamy, but it's blending out really nice. I am gonna put a little bit of this to highlight because this is just like too dark to walk outside. So I'm just putting this on in the center of my face just to lighten everything up a little bit, hopefully. Concealer looks nice. I'm hoping it doesn't crease because it does look pretty creamy. I always set my concealer with the Stargazer powder. I don't know why we're doing a full face thing right now, but let's just do it. I don't feel like I want to set this with the powder. I love the finish of it and I don't want to take away from that. I'm just using whatever's left over on the brush just to put right on the center of my face. There's not a whole lot of powder or product on here at all. I'm going to do the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. Right now it's 10.45. All right, so the rest of my makeup's on. It's now 11 o'clock. Ooh, that was a quick one. I feel like my face is looking extra highlighted right now because I'm not used to wearing like an NC30 over here. So color aside, because I really wish this was like four shades lighter, it looks really nice. It looks very skin-like. I don't think I would call this full coverage. I can definitely still see freckles coming through, but I like that because it's covering up the stuff I need to cover up, 
but it still looks very skin-like. I feel like if you're someone who has a lot of stuff to cover up, but it's summer and you don't want to like cake on the foundation or look super matte or whatever it is. I really am liking the way that this looks. We'll see how it holds up throughout the day, but right now it's looking super nice. As far as the lifting claim, I don't know. I'm not seeing too much lifting happening. Do you? I didn't have any trouble blending out brush, br brush, well, blending out br br words. Blush, bronzer, highlight. I didn't use a whole lot of bronzer today because I'm looking pretty bronze as it is. The blush I use is a Catrice Illuminating Blush. I have mixed feelings on this. I don't really like the glitters in it, but I do like the color. This is in the shade La Vie Rose, by the way. Highlight is my fave Essence Eyeshadow in 01 Snowflake. Such a great pale highlight. And then on my eyes, literally all I used is this Polish Choice. It's actually a blush and contour palette. All I used was this, this, and this. It's actually a blush, but I just blended it into my crease a little bit. I have a very extravagant combo on the lips right now. I have ColourPop Lippy Pencil in BFF. Then I have the NYX Lingerie Liquid Lipstick in Baby Doll. Then on top of that, I have the NYX High Voltage Lipstick in Mirage, just kind of on the center of my lips. And I think that's everything on my face right now. So I'm gonna wear this as long as possible before I go to the tanning thing. By the way, it's 11 o'clock. Did I already say that? I don't know. So I will check back in throughout the day. So it's 11.15 and I just wanted to let you guys know that in about 15 minutes, it has pretty much fully set. It's not transferring anymore. It feels more of like a almost powder finish, but it still feels very skin-like. It doesn't look any more matte really. It just feels like it's totally set now. So it does take about 15 minutes to set. All right, so it's now 4.30 in the afternoon. So the foundation's been on for about five and a half hours. And I'm doing this check-in in natural lighting so you guys can see the difference. But now that I've been outside, I've looked at it outside in my car in indoor lighting. It's not wowing me as much as it was under the studio lights and when I first applied it. The look of it kind of reminds me of like a tinted moisturizer. The shade is definitely too dark. See where I blended it down my neck and then my actual neck color here? There's just something about the way that it looks on my skin that I feel like it just looks like a tinted moisturizer. Now, the thing that I do like is that when you touch it, it feels 100% like skin. If you're one of those people that really likes a foundation to feel like your skin and it's not gonna like transfer everywhere and come off, this one totally feels like that. Getting real up close and personal right now. Upper lip and around the nose area looks really good actually. You can definitely see it up here. As of right now, it's just really not wowing me. I was editing back the footage from earlier and it looked really good. I think it looked really good when I first applied it and like under the lights. You can see a lot of stuff coming through. Definitely not full coverage. You can totally see all of this. I'm trying to check back one more time in a couple hours and just see my final thoughts, but I think I have a pretty good idea right now. All right, so it's only been an hour since the last check-in. It's 5.30 now, but I'm gonna call this one a wrap. Still gotta pack, still gotta go to the tanning place, wrapping up some work stuff and have an entire other video to edit and have to wrap up this video. This has been on for six and a half hours, so sorry this is a little bit shorter than my usual check-in. I'm not impressed. Not too much more to say than in my last check-in, but basically I just think this doesn't look that great. I have gotten a little bit oily, oils coming off on my finger, but nothing crazy oil-wise. It just looks very average to me, I guess. Kind of reminds me of the Elsie foundation, which I did a whole review on during 15 Days of Foundation. If this was a $10 foundation, I don't think it would be worth it. Since it's a $67 foundation, I especially don't think it's worth it. Since it didn't settle into any of the lines around my upper lip or my nose area, which is pretty rare for me, if you have more mature skin or you have some wrinkles and you have a hard time finding a foundation that doesn't settle into those lines, this one didn't seem to really settle anywhere, which is a plus. I would definitely recommend getting a sample first before buying the full size of this. I will probably be returning this. I just don't think it's really worth it to me for what I like and what I look for in a foundation. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.